All right, it's 1030. We'll call the meeting to order. This is uh, Dave Ness, board chair of uh, Essex. Holly, would you uh, read through the roll call? And I'd ask the uh, board members, as your name is read, to also uh, state your agency and uh, who you're representing, if, if appropriate. Go ahead, Holly. Thank you. Okay. Wendy Hess. Mindy Benson. Here, Mindy Benson with Blackhawk County Emergency Management, representing Iowa Emergency Management Association. Michelle Bischoff. President Michelle Bischoff, Des Moines Fire, representing Iowa Professional Fire Chiefs. Curtis Lowton. President, Blakesburg Fire and Rescue, representing the Volunteer Fire Department. David Ness. Municipal Police from Des Moines. Daniel Schaefer. Uh, Denison Police Department, uh, Municipal Police. Dan Fink. I thought I saw Dan. Yeah, Holly um, is being present, so he may have be okay. he may have issues with his microphone. Okay. Jason Schlutenhofer. Haley Nichols. Cindy Hike. Cindy Hike with the Iowa Department of Public Health. Peter Huffman. Here, Iowa Department of Transportation. Trace Kendig. Keith Hove. Here, Iowa Department of Public Safety. Patrick Updike. Patrick Updike, Iowa Department of Corrections. Blake Derushi. Here, Blake Derushi, Iowa Homeland Security and Emergency Management. Jessica Turba. Here, Iowa Office of the Chief Information Officer. And we do have a quorum. Okay, just uh, throw it out one more time. Any other uh, board members that were on the call and uh, missed as we went through the uh, roster? Hearing none, we'll move on to the uh, agenda for today. Uh, I have no opening remarks it's uh, great to see the uh, level of participation uh, in a busy month right after or shortly after the uh, holiday weekend so thank thank you everybody we'll move right into the meat of the agenda and we'll start with uh, Swickmeyer's report oh i'm sorry i got ahead of myself already the uh, better approve today's agenda i'll entertain a motion fish off moves second hoffman i have a first and second any uh, further discussion Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I'll entertain a motion for the uh, meeting minutes from June 10th. Schaefer will make motion. Well, we'll second. First and second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Now, uh, Chris Meyer, on to the SWIC report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, can you hear me okay? You bet. All right, excellent. Uh, we are going to start off today uh, with an update on in-person meetings. Uh, we're looking at a couple of facilities. Uh, we're hoping that some things fall in line. Uh, but at this point, the goal is to have us back in person for our August meeting. Uh, hopefully we'll have some things worked out solidly here in the next uh, couple of days and we'll have an announcement ready to put out to everybody within the next uh, couple of weeks. I'm cautiously optimistic that we'll be able to uh, be in person next month. Uh, it'll be a nice change of pace to be back in person again. Uh, control station update for us, uh, the PSAP grant, we're working on kind of winding that thing down. I submitted our grant quarterly report last night along with our inventory list, and uh, we're getting into the waning hours of that project. And, uh, overall, that project looks like it's been a resounding success. So I do want to thank everybody that had a hand in making that happen. 
Uh, I know Blake Drew, she's on uh, today, and Blake and Homeland Security and uh, Andy Buffington from uh, Hancock and Winnebago County and every PSAP that works to get that uh, equipment installed. Uh, we've made a lot of progress with respect to interoperability with regards to that project, and I do want to thank everybody involved for that. So that being said, uh, we'll move on to the next item. A couple of things that have been occupying my time recently is uh, assisting a few counties with some communications resource requests for specific events. Uh, one wrapped up over the Independence Day weekend and another will conclude uh, this weekend. Uh, one thing I do want to bring up to the board uh, with respect to some of these resource requests is it would be beneficial for us as a board to start to consider uh, the age of our current radio cache and um, what capabilities those have and possibly looking for some ways to fund some updates. Uh, as of today, uh, we do not have a whole lot of radios uh, collectively uh, that are in a cache that could access ISIX uh, on an as-needed and on-demand basis. So long-term, it would probably be a good idea for us to look at starting to uh, find ways to phase in uh, new radio caches uh, that, that that would be current and updated and ISIX capable and would hopefully put us uh, in a good spot for the next 10 years. Uh, much of our radio cache is nearing kind of that 10 year mark or in some cases has exceeded that. So it would be good to start looking for the next step to do that. Uh, I've been working with TIA and TR8 and the P25 steering committee on some standards over the last uh, month as well. Uh, there's been a lot of work placed in that recently. Uh, also with the Federal Partnership for Interoperable Communications and uh, their feedback on some interoperability standards. Uh, as far as voting goes, I've placed some votes in favor on a few uh, P25 standards recently within TR8 and the P25 Steering Committee. Uh, some of those are related to antenna measurements and kind of updating the way that is, is, is measured and, and, and conducted and reported. Uh, a little bit of work on encryption within the standards level uh, related to OTAR. Uh, there's also a white paper that's being developed that will look at further identifying some issues with existing uh, equipment such as the ISI and SSI. Uh, in particular, the functions related to emergency button functionality and dynamic regrouping. Uh, those functions have some uh, noted uh, long-standing issues, and uh, the user community is coming together to work on a white paper uh, that will be addressing uh, limited or in some cases no functionality with those specific feature sets uh, when in some configurations with an ISSI and CSSI. So uh, that longstanding work at the federal level is continuing. Uh, moving on to our deratio response uh, with respect to the SDR deployment in Clinton. Uh, I've been coordinating with Homeland Security and Emergency Management on starting the FEMA reimbursement process. Uh, the update I got this morning is that FEMA has our documents, so that process is in motion. Uh, so hopefully that reimbursement will be coming through uh, within uh, several months. As far as an update on the actual deployment in Clinton, I haven't heard anything stating that there's been any problems. So it seems that we're steady state, uh, which is anything you can ask for, uh, which is all you can ask for rather during a deployment. So that's good. For some training-related items on ISIX training for local agencies, we had a few more stops this past month for local agencies. Uh, we had situational training we were working on with one agency. We had to push that back a month uh, due to some things going on within the agency. Uh, so that will hopefully be delivered uh, in August. Uh, again, there's no cost for that agency training. So if you or someone you're connected to would want that, please let us know and we'll be happy to deliver it. Uh, with ISIX regional training, uh, we are going to be holding a virtual refresher on July 20th. That'll start at 1300. That session should last an hour and it will be really geared towards those RAGBRAI counties. Uh, that sign up form is up on our website. It'll connect to our JOT form. So if you want to register for that, please do. We'll talk about the comms plan uh, for that as far as the mobile component of it. And if local agencies want to reserve any resources on status board, uh, we'll go over that with them as well. Uh, pilot in-person training is set up for Region 2 on July 29th. Uh, that sign-up form is up as well, and uh, Region 5 is almost locked in in addition to that. So we're starting to step through the process uh, with respect to getting, uh, or getting some more regional in-person training going. Uh, status board, uh, you may notice that site status tab is still up. Uh, there's a reason for that. We're going through um, system maintenance 
and any sites that are going to be possibly taken down for maintenance will be listed on status board. Again, when you go to that site status tab, you'll have to double click on the current administration notes to sort it uh, according to the sites that are undergoing maintenance, and then you'll be able to see that. Uh, so uh, that uh, is in addition to emails that are being sent out to agency points of contact for that system maintenance. Uh, interstate interoperability work, uh, meetings have uh, kind of continued and uh, restarted uh, following the Memorial Day holiday. Uh, the good news there with that is our joint MOA with Minnesota that would formalize an agreement between our two states has been through the AG's office. Uh, it is now currently in the Minnesota uh, kind of contract uh, attorney general's office for review. Hopefully we'll be able to get that thing signed here within the next uh, quarter or two. Uh, we've also been working on that process uh, for interstate communications between the two states. We've made significant progress on that as well. Uh, hopefully we'll have a good uh, update for everybody on some of the progress we've made over the last uh, six months with that, uh, within the next uh, month or so uh, that we could present to the board. We've done some exciting stuff. Uh, last item of note, our July meeting for our FOG and uh, TICP was pushed back to August. We're working on finalizing a date and a location for that as well. That is my report, Mr. Chair. I will uh, go ahead and take any questions. Hearing none, uh, appreciate the report. We'll move on to Mr. Derushi with the 911 Council report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As a reminder, the 911 Council meets uh, just prior to the ISIX meeting that is recorded and available on YouTube. If you want to rewatch that meeting, uh, just let me know and I'll shoot you the link. To capture some of the highlights, uh, I did let people know that we signed a 10-year uh, contract with Comtech to continue their next-gen core services. Uh, the previous 10-year contract was up and uh, we contracted, again, similar structure five years with an additional five one-year renewal period. So they will be in place as the next-gen core service for at least five, uh, perhaps as many as 10 additional years uh, down the road. Uh, one of the things I wanted to bring to everyone's attention, uh, both at the council meeting and here, is within the infrastructure bill that's currently before Congress, uh, there is $15 billion currently uh, within that language for next-gen 911 funding uh, in the way of grants. Uh, in comparison, uh, the current 911 grant program that the National 911 Office offers uh, was $115 million nationwide. And again, this one would be $15 billion. There's a little bit of back and forth between uh, APCO and NINA and a couple other of the associations, uh, public safety associations, on the exact wording within that language. I don't think that will be enough to, to kill it or derail anything as far as the 911 portion of that infrastructure bill goes. Uh, but just wanna make sure everyone is aware of that. We've already engaged with some of the private sector partners that we have uh, and, and really looking to see, you know, what kind of our dream wish list would be to get to end state next gen 911, you know, should that grant become a reality. So uh, just wanted to make everyone aware of that language that's in that existing infrastructure bill at Congress. Uh, the last thing I wanted to update everyone on, um, was the shared services project. That is the effort that we have uh, to for, for PSAPs and 911 call centers um, to share some of the call taking equipment and technology that they have. Um, currently, there are 25 PSAPs operating on the state shared call handling platform with an additional 14 who have signed up and are kind of in the queue to get turned up. So. Um, you know, by, you know, right now there would be around 40, uh, just under half of the PSAPs um, would be on that platform. So uh, pending any questions, that concludes my report. Thank you. Thanks. On to the uh, ISIX user group committee. I don't believe uh, Chair Schlutenhofer was here. I'm not sure about uh, Vice Chair Dennert or Swick Myers, anyone able to present? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I uh, talked to Sheriff Flutenhofer before the meeting today. He will be unable to attend due to a commitment that kind of came up, and I believe Mr. Dennert is uh, enjoying some R&R this week. So I can cover the user group committee. Uh, we reviewed four applications uh, in cooperation and uh, coordination with the system manufacturer Motorola. Loading was found to be appropriate. 
All four applications were approved to the board uh, for action later today under new business. All right, sounds good, thank you. And uh, you wanna roll right into finance committee. Yes, sir, I certainly can. Uh, the finance committee, uh, we got our financial statements uh, for the month of June. Uh, total expenditures for the month of June were $25,435.20. We did receive our appropriation as well. So our funding, uh, our funds that are available total uh, 2000 or $244,142.79. Uh, we've also been working with uh, Sarah McDermott on the Sleek Pea closeout activities. She was not able to be here for the meeting today, but I can give you an update on where we landed with that as far as Sleek Pea closeout goes. Um, all of the closeout documents related to the Sleek Pea 2.0 grant were submitted on June 28th. Uh, for Sleek Pea 2.0, activities officially ended on March 31st, and all closeout documents needed. Uh, they basically needed to be sent in by the 29th, uh, and, and that was done. Total funds expended and received for this award were $386,552.95. Uh, we uh, had a balance remaining of $224,195.05. Uh, that, that, that was left unspent. Uh, we should be receiving an official closeout letter once all the documents have been reviewed. Uh, we will be expected to keep all Sleek P 2.0 financial records for three years from the date of the closeout letter uh, in order to comply with the audit requirements. Um, if the board would like further reporting from Sarah on uh, Sleek P 2 uh, for next month's meeting, I can meet up with her and request her presence. But if you feel that report is sufficient, uh, we can go ahead and officially close the books on Sleek P. I've been satisfied with the level of detail provided, uh, unless there's uh, somebody else who would like additional information and they could uh, request that offline as well, uh, unless there's somebody that has a comment now. All right, appreciate your report. We'll move on to uh, Governance Committee with uh, Chair Huffman. And the uh, Governance Committee meeting fell on a holiday this month, and since there was no new business to discuss, we did not reschedule. Thank you. Chair Bischoff with uh, Operations Committee. Yes, the Operations Committee met yesterday. However, there was myself and DPS people in, um, in, in attendance, so we just kind of caught up on some things, but we I would not say we had an official meeting. All right, thank you for that. Uh, outreach committee, Swick Myers. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I'll go ahead and cover this. Um, the newsletter went out last month as expected. Uh, we had some delays in pushing it out, but it made it out a, a, a day or so late. Target date for the next one to go out is Thursday, and uh, it looks like we have everything in line for the most part with that, so we're not expecting any delays. Uh, outreach will be uh, working with any uh, training uh, sessions that are being held in person or virtually to ensure that any outreach that needs to be pushed out to stakeholders is done. That's the report. I'll go ahead and take any questions. Hearing none, we'll move on to a training committee. I don't think Haley was able to join us. Chris, do you have anything on that? Yeah, uh, I can certainly cover that, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, training committee met last month, and the main topic of discussion was continued work on the air landing zone uh, training module. Uh, we got some feedback uh, from some uh, stakeholders that would like some uh, explanatory graphics on some of the differences in communication methods and modes between ground personnel communication centers and aircraft. So we're working on trying to sort that out and figure out exactly what those graphics would be and how they would work and a good way to articulate that with uh, respect to the script. That work is ongoing uh, and hopefully we'll have something solidified uh, by the uh, meeting uh, at the end of July and we'll take it from there and hopefully get it published soon. Uh, a couple of updates really quick as well, also on our virtual COMEL. 
Uh, that is being held next week. Uh, we have 15 attendees for that uh, course, which is good. Uh, we did have to open it up to outside uh, attendees as well to help make sure that we made the most effective use of those training seats. Uh, the biggest issue we've had with getting that virtual COML course filled up was that uh, a lot of the survey respondents we had that expressed interest in that course uh, did not have previous completion of ICS 300. So going forward, uh, we're still looking at hosting an in-person state-sponsored COML this fall. Uh, we're going to work really closely with HSCMD to make sure that there's at least one ICS 300 that was held uh, so that uh, those that are interested in our COML can jump in on that ICS 300 and get that taken care of uh, so they can go ahead and uh, take that state-sponsored COML course. Uh, the actual delivery of that state-sponsored COML will be dependent upon when ICS 300 is offered inside of the state once again, uh, but we're keeping a close eye on that and working with uh, the state training officer on when that may be, and hopefully we'll have an announcement on that uh, relatively soon. Well, that's the report from training. I'll go ahead and take any questions. Hearing none, we'll move on to Technology Committee. Chair Updike. Thank you. The uh, Technology Committee met on June 24th and July 6th uh, last month um, after or during the meeting and at previous times a request was made to develop an ICS 217A that would um, address trunk system uh, talk groups and so we went ahead and spent the uh, two meetings developing that. Chris, can you put that on the screen? Patrick, I don't have that available right now but I will work on getting that up on the screen so everybody can see. So you can carry on through the report and I'll get it up on the screen while okay. you uh, deliver your report. Yeah, okay, thanks. So. We had a committee member take that role on, and he uh, got us this ICS 217A with the ISIC trunk system talk groups. And uh, once we get it on the display here, you'll see it's relatively simple. We want to make sure that we take our time with this because uh, there's some fine print that we want to look over. We want to make sure that uh, at least the spelling is correct, the spacing is correct. And that way people have a document that they can rely on, they know is gonna be right. We're not gonna develop any policy to, to um, put any teeth to this because there's already standards that exist for that. And so once that's all vetted out, that'll be put on that document. Uh, there are some references to some standards down in the bottom part of that, that uh, document. And so we wanna make Make sure we take our time with this. When we feel like it's it's uh, good to go, then we'll push it over to operations and the other committees that need to see it or want to see it, and they can uh, vet that out. So, um, pretty short report. Any questions? Patrick, I'd just like to express my my thanks for your committee working on that. I know the the having the trunked radio system on the set on the um, uh, 217A has been a, a topic that we've talked extensively about and, and much effort's been put into it, so just appreciate your work. Thank you. That's all I have. Hearing no further questions, we'll uh, keep Michelle uh, queued up for the FirstNet Broadband Committee. Uh, FirstNet has not met since our last committee meeting. We meet uh, next week. That is my report. Thank you. Thank you. All right, item 16, uh, information sharing amongst board members. Anything not on the agenda that we have a question or concern or comment about? All right, we'll move into uh, 16B, uh, project uh, manager update from a Motorola rep. Hey, good morning, uh, Chair Ness. This is Dave Gordon. Can you hear me? Yes. All righty. Yeah, just a quick update from Motorola perspective. Um, we've been working on um, doing the PMs at the ISIC sites. Um, 
uh, hopefully by tomorrow we'll be finally wrapped up with our um, generator and HVAC PM work for this year. Um, we'll have, they're finishing up some sites yet today and into tomorrow. We should have those all wrapped up. And then we've, as uh, Swick Myers mentioned earlier, we are doing, we have started the PM process on the actual RF sites, the radio sites as well. And we've got um, roughly uh, 15, 16 of those done already. And we're working to get the rest of the schedule put together um, out on those PMs as well. And looking at wrapping those up before the end of summer here as well. That is uh, everything I had from an update for today. Any questions? Thanks for joining us, Dave. And for your report, uh, ISIC system admin, Scott on. Uh, Mr. Chair, I see Scott Richardson's name listed here, but it looks like his audio may not be working. Uh, Scott, are you one of our callers? Well, let's jump ahead to the uh, uh, AT&T FirstNet uh, update. All right. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. A um, few updates today. We have. I'm, I'm going to do a quick uh, new site build, and I also have some updates on our staffing. So, since our last meeting, we've had seven new sites um, put up across Iowa: west of Ottumwa and Melrose. We had one in southwest Iowa in Grant and Orient, um, two towers. So one, two towers there. In south central Iowa, we had one go up in Humiston as well as Plano. And then we had one east of Osceola and Lucas, and another one in um, Chariton. So seven towers since the last time we met. In addition, um, as we've built out our network in Iowa, um, especially in the Southwest, and as more agencies have been adopting FirstNet, we are increasing our staff to better support you. Um, if you remember, it was David uh, Barnett just for by himself for a while. I joined the team in September. David's now back in Tennessee, but. Going forward, we're going to have five FirstNet consultants across the state. Um, we have myself in the southeast. Jacob Coates will cover the northeast. We have now um, Keenan O'Neill, who will be in the northwest. And then Kyle Hansen is coming on board on Monday to cover the southwest. In addition, um, Tyler Richard is on the call today. He is uh, truly taking David's spot. He will be covering the Polk County area. Um, and some of the surrounding counties, as well as the state level accounts. So, Tyler, if you want to introduce yourself real quick. Sure. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. So, my name is Tyler Richard. Um, I've been in, involved in the public safety industry for a um, little over seven years. Um, I worked at Caltech as the director of professional services, involved heavily on the pre sale side. Uh, worked very closely with uh, David Barnett. Um, Jacob Coates and um, Mark Blank. Um, and so I'm just looking forward to maintaining the Central Island state of accounts and, and then also uh, the communication of the ISIC board. So thanks for having me. And then um, also uh, our, our, our manager, Daniel Noble, he's working on a little map that kind of outlines everybody's territory. Um, and I'll, I'll send that over to Holly anybody else, we can get that forward out so everybody kind of knows um, which first net representative covers their area. Well, thank you, Bart. Those are some exciting uh, personnel and uh, service uh, enhancements FirstNet is providing. Any further questions from the group? All right, we'll stay on FirstNet topic with um, any comments from FirstNet authority, Kevin Nida. Sure, Kevin Dida here. I've got a uh, brief update uh, just to follow up what I sent to uh, Holly. Um, under our latest news, we have uh, several several new articles. Uh, FirstNet provides life safety or <clears throat> utility operators. As you know, utility operators are extended primary, uh, providing mobile mobility and flexibility for, Mich <clears throat> for Michigan law enforcement. And FirstNet uplift the question provides green congestion. And uh, more exciting news, back on June 28th, uh, there was an announcement that uh, FirstNet has expanded public safety access to more than 100 portable cell sites. So we'll have uh, over 100 
in addition to or with the addition of uh, numerous of our compact rapid deployables our latest podcast podcast episode we're up to episode 54 women in stem breaking barriers and innovating for public safety and then we have two future webinars coming up one on uh, july 13th i'll be participating with uh, kyle richardson out of the east and we'll be presenting uh, to minnesota department of public safety however that's open to everyone nationwide so july 13th 9 to 11 central time and the link information is um, on the update also august 5th 2 to 3 p.m eastern time uh, bruce fitzgerald in the east will be presenting on uh, what FirstNet has done during the uh, pandemic and inside look uh, how agencies were managing a uh, combined impact of wildfires and pandemic response particularly here in California, leveraging FirstNet devices and deployables, how they overcome challenges at mass testing centers, and then utilizing the LMR to push the talk uh, devices that we have. And completing the report here with our next FirstNet board meeting will be August 18th, 11 to 1300 Eastern. And uh, there's a, a link to that on the update. So thank you again, and I'll take any questions. Well, thank you for your report. Um, thank you, sir. Move on to uh, CISA ECD update with Jim Lundstedt. Good morning, Chair Ness. Is the audio okay? That's great. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, have no official report today, just an update to the uh, uh, long deferred in person interoperable communications technical assistance program training and exercise activities. Uh, we are hoping to be resuming that in the September time frame. Everything is still on a by exception basis only, but uh, anticipating that we will be able to support CISA-led uh, training and exercise activities in the September or worst case, October 2021 time frame. Uh, that concludes my report, unless there's any questions. We share your enthusiasm and eagerness for those to return. Thank you. Standards Working Group, uh, Swick Myers. Yes, uh, Chair Ness. I think Scott Richardson may be back on now. Scott, can you hear me okay? I can. Can you hear me? Yes, you are loud and clear. I'll let you go first. Okay. All right. Sorry for the technical issue there. Um, Dave Gordon covered a lot of what I was going to go over with uh, system maintenance. Um, I've just got some new numbers for uh, this month, the previous month of June. 24,415 radios are now on ISIX. Uh Total talk groups are 25,541. And we had 2,307,819 push-to-talks. And we're currently running at uh, 3,850 radios connected with 11 conversations going on at the moment as I look here in the NOC. Also, I wanted to mention we do have the new NOC phone number up and running. And if anyone has a pencil, I will read that off. It is 515-278-5613. And we should also publish that in the next edition of the newsletter as well. Um, and that is all I had. Thanks, Scott. Uh, I was don't mean to put you on the spot with this, but uh, I was invited to participate in a uh, in something that organized, I believe, uh, by uh, Chair Huffman, and maybe participated with. Uh, uh, system admin folks yesterday, would uh, either of you be uh, prepared to just offer a couple comments on the resiliency discussion, uh, as as I would describe it, uh, that took place yesterday? Yeah, I'll, I'll comment on, then uh, Chair Huffman can uh, jump in as well. Um, there was some discussion about Cybersecurity, um, recent uh, attack that had happened to a uh, organization in Oregon. Um, so there was talk about whether we needed to have a um, an overall look 
of, of the system and see where any vulnerabilities would be and what, what needs to occur to patch any vulnerabilities. Nothing was decided. It was uh, just uh, initial consultation, I would say, and discussion to be had. Uh, Peter, if you'd like to jump in and add anything. Sure, yeah, it was really about what kind of uh, you know, third-party assessments uh, towards cybersecurity of the ISIC system we felt like would be uh, prudent given the uh, prevalence of uh, you know, cybersecurity attacks in, in public safety recently. Additionally, um, there was discussion around what kind of uh, best practices uh, we can put into place when assessing certain levels of ISIX users as well. So if somebody wants to uh, add, uh, you know, a tower and connect uh, to the main system, what do we need to have in place more than we do now, if anything, uh, to make sure that that can't cause an issue with the rest of the system in terms of uh, not just operation, because we already try to make sure that's okay, but in, in terms of compromising the strength of our cybersecurity stance. Excellent. Uh, appreciate your uh, proactive uh, beginning the process of uh, looking into these things because they certainly have been occurring elsewhere in the country and the world. So uh, thanks for uh, leading on that. All right, uh, Swick Myers, the Standard Working Group, did you have anything? Yeah, a quick update for the group here. Uh, comment period recently closed on our update to standard 1.4.0, which discusses pursuits. Uh, we did receive some feedback uh, from a county sheriff uh, regarding some language and the strength of that language uh, related to uh, when it would be most prudent in uh, his view to have uh, personnel in the field switch directly to a statewide TAC. Uh, we had a chance to meet with that person directly. Uh, we had some representatives from uh, Standards Working Group, uh, the board, and uh, also uh, DPS meet, meet with the sheriff as well. I believe that was a couple of weeks ago. Very productive meeting, got some additional clarity on his comments as well, and we're working on incorporating that feedback into the standard. That standard will likely be up for review at the Standards Working Group meeting at the end of July. And we also have looked at the sub-regional standard as well. Uh, that update was passed on to operations for some additional looks. And uh, hopefully we'll have uh, those two documents before the board here within the next uh, couple of months. Uh, that's the update from the standards working group. I can take any questions. All right, uh, hearing none, um, we'll move to the old business portion of the agenda. Uh, Chair Bischoff, any update on sub-regional uh, other than what Chris just mentioned? No further updates. Okay, and we'll move to uh, technology chair up the uh, about the MC-12B policy. Yeah, I'll just get right to the point. Last month, we uh, went ahead and adopted this policy, and I made a mistake. I should have put it out for 30-day comment instead. And so um, I would be making two separate motions. The first, the first motion would be to uh, pull this policy back uh, from being adopted so that hopefully the second motion would be to put it out for 30-day comment, which gives people an opportunity to, um, you know, look that over. Um, just got ahead of myself, made a mistake. So I'm going to make a motion that this ITICS MC-12B policy be pulled back from adoption. Well, in a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, on your uh, second portion of that, Patrick. The uh, second motion is is to take the Essex MC 12B uh, draft and post it for 30 day comment. Got a 
report first and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed. Motion carried. Thank you, Patrick. It wasn't just on you. Any of us could have caught that, but uh, appreciate you uh, noticing it shortly after the meeting. And uh, we thought it most prudent to bring it back to the full board uh, to proceed in this manner. So appreciate you doing that. And Thank we'll you. move on to you bet, uh, new business. Uh, Swick Myers, do you have this? Uh, I understand somebody else will need to make a motion, but uh, can you provide a brief report on the new users under consideration. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, you are right. Someone else will have to make the motion as I am a non-voting member of the board. Uh, four applications are up for approval today. Uh, they include Blackhawk County Emergency Management at level one. Uh, this application is to get access to six interoperability talk groups along with the EDM tax. And uh, also there is an interest uh, from Blackhawk County Emergency Management uh, to have access to the NWS pilot uh, that is ongoing currently. The next uh, application is an updated application from Calhoun County. They are updating to level four. Uh, they're looking at adding two sites to the ISIX platform and moving operations over to that over the next couple of years. Uh, following that, Story County Sheriff's Office and StoryCom uh, in general is applying for level two access. Uh, this would basically be to have access to uh, all the interoperable talk groups as well as a couple of uh, talk groups for county level transports. Uh, lastly, uh, but certainly not least, uh, Poconis Police Department is applying for level one access for interoperability. Uh, this would be for about uh, eight radios or so. All these applications were approved with respect to loading by the system manufacturer Motorola. All the applications were found to be appropriate with the user group committee as well, and they are moved up here for um, approval today. Uh, as a heads up, we may need to do these as separate motions as well, since uh, Ms. Benson is a member of the Blackhawk County Emergency Management. So we may have to do the Blackhawk County Emergency Management uh, application separately uh, for any abstentions that may be necessary. And Mr. Chair, I would like to actually remove myself from voting on that as well, since I it is my application and I'm involved with it. Okay, appreciate that. Uh, I think with that uh, abstention, Chris, I would be comfortable entertaining a motion for the four, recognizing that uh, a uh, vote in favor from Blackhawk County would be abstained from item number one. Does that meet uh, the rest of the board's understanding of Robert's rules uh, for acceptable approval of these four items? I believe so. Yeah, I, I believe that works. Okay. Slightly more efficient. Yes, so I'll entertain a motion if somebody will make that. Thank we'll you. Make it. Oh. Board will second. I heard two Wotans. Uh, who else was in there? Thank. Okay, thank you, Dan. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed. All right, we are through the uh, new business. On to the public comment. If there is somebody that would like to address uh, Essex with a public comment, a non board member or a board member, I guess. All right, hearing none, we'll uh, consider the meeting adjourned at uh, 11 13. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.